Welcome to your On TV News Desk. Here in the studio this afternoon, I have Dr. Lucas Castellani. How's it going today? Good, good. Good. And it's World Antibiotic Awareness Week. And you recently sent a letter to local media um, kind of dispelling some of the common myths about uh, antibiotic uses and vaccines. Now, can you tell me a little bit about, because um, this your letter surrounded the limits of antibiotics? Mm -hmm. It's a good, uh, good question. You know, antibiotics are a great drug. They were invented in probably the 1940s when penicillin came along, but they've been around in our environment for years and years. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, some of the myths behind it are that they're the panacea for everything, everything from right. the common cold to even, you know, people who are just a bit unwell. Someone might prescribe an antibiotic or someone might think they need an antibiotic. And unfortunately, we always have to weigh out the risks and benefits, and they're not a perfect uh, drug. They have their own side effects, and they have their own risks, both for the person and and uh, other effects to sort of our own uh, global society. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think probably a lot of people don't know that there's actually side effects to antibiotics. Yeah, that's it. I, you know, that's always the thing that I come across. You know, sometimes I'll get called about someone who has this side effect or that uh, reaction. Uh, you know, antibiotics can have ra anything from a rash to someone can even have anaphylaxis to the antibiotic. Wow. They can get pretty unwell. I, you know, I have patients uh, who I see every day who get some sort of side effect. And if you ask them, you know, how do you feel after that antibiotic, oftentimes they'll say, I don't feel so well. Right. Um, the concerning thing is in a bacteria called uh, Clostridium difficile, uh, that's a, a cause of diarrhea, actually. And it can cause quite severe diarrhea that people can lose their colon. And they wow. can and they can even die from it. So it's actually that's one of the concerns about antibiotics wow. um, that people forget when they say let's use it just in case. But right. really, what they're they're saying is I'll take the right. risk of that for the potential maybe benefit of this. So is there any possible way that an antibiotic could um, prove useful taking it just in case? It's a good question. Um, I'd say probably there are circumstances in some people who may have, uh, let's say, um, uh, a heart infection or heart valve in the past and they're going to the dentist. There's some literature to support taking an antibiotic when they go to the dentist. Right. Um, there's uh, some people who get so many infections that taking a pill to prevent an, anti an infection sometimes, that might be a situation where you might take it just in case. So in the cir circumstance where the risk of getting the disease is very high, you might want something to prevent it, right. or uh, they, someone's been having something so many times that you might want to prevent it. There may be some circumstance there, but again, it's again, it's not without cost, right? right? I mean, you're still taking the risk of the antibiotics, as we mentioned. And what, what? Okay, so in your letter, you mention um, that there's a gap between antibiotics and the evolving, res evolving resistant organisms. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, that's probably the largest concern that people have nowadays. And um, part of it is that probably since the beginning of time, antibiotics have been smart, sorry, or microorganisms have been smart enough to defeat the antibiotics that we develop. Right. We develop the antibiotics, we start using them. They evolve. And then there's resistance. Right. It's been the age old thing since the 40s. But um, so the, the problem with uh, using antibiotics and the global threat is that, um, in fact, we aren't developing enough antibiotics to now keep up to that concern. And right. now we're seeing people, unfortunately, die of resistant infections. We're seeing r resistant infections even locally in our own hospitals from people who have never been exposed to health care. Right. who are getting them just in the community and come in and we have very limited options to treat them with. Wow. So it's quite scary. So the more we use antibiotics that we don't need, the more we're helping these resistant organisms to evolve? Uh, I, think, I think that's partly true. It's difficult to know. Um, there's a lot of leaps that you have to make. But I think for the most part, the more you use an antibiotic, the more we're using it as a society, uh, or using them as a society, the less options you have in the future. I think that's proven now. Whether or not you're leading to the development or more selection of these resistant bugs, I think, uh, I think it it's more semantics than anything, but really, the more you use it, probably the more you lose it. Right. So now, as a doctor, because I, I think a lot of the problem too is, so okay, let's say I go and, I, and this has happened. So I go to the walk-in clinic and I have a really, really bad cold, and then they tell me, you know, we should go home and rest and drink lots of fluids. Mm -hmm. And then it's like I wanted an antibiotic because I want to feel better. But are mm -hmm. you basically saying though that rest and fluids is the better? 
solution? Yeah, I mean, I had a mentor one time, uh, and he said, you know, he throw up the slide at the end of his talk always, especially on viruses. The best treatment is good old chicken soup. I mean, there's a lot to be said about that. Right. Most of the time, these colds and these viruses, even most of the pneumonias we see, when people talk about pneumonias, I need an antibiotic. Most of the pneumonias are viral. So right. no matter what antibiotic you give someone and they take, it won't help it. And right. so it's only time that will help it, and then you're just taking the risk of this, this drug, like any drug. So we're over-medicating in a lot of ways. I think so, and I think it's a, part of the problem is, as people and as patients, we think that we need a fix, and that was driven by the fact that penicillin was so effective when it came to the market, and antibiotics have saved so many lives right. that, that it, it sometimes is thought that, well, it's you a fix-all. It's a fix-all. It will work. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, part of it is practitioners are prescribing it too much, and, and that's the, the just-in-case thing that we right. talk about, both for patients or for prescribers. So, yeah, it's... it's The danger comes from both ends. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're gonna, uh, be back, going to be back in the studio with Dr. Lucas uh, Castel Castellani, who is a, uh, an infectious disease physician. So we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about antibiotics and vaccines. Stay tuned. Welcome back to your news desk. Here still with Dr. Lucas Castellani talking about antibiotics and vaccines. So we've talked a little bit about um, where, we're, where we're at kind of as a society in terms of our use of antibiotics. Um, my question for you now is where do vaccines play into all of this? Because that's another kind of contentious topic that people, you know, to, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. Yeah, it's a very contentious topic. I think you know, vaccines are one of the most important uh, discoveries of the past century. Um, they have saved countless lives, uh, one could argue maybe even more than antibiotics themselves. Right. Um, and the reason they're effective, because not only do they prevent some bacterial infection, because there's vaccines against bacteria, but in fact they prevent viral infections, which actually in turn, if you can tr prevent someone's influenza, you may prevent the problem of trying to decide do they have just a virus or a flu, right. or do they have a bacterial infection? And so if they don't have it, then you don't even have that question. Right. So they may not get antibiotics in that circumstance. So you're preventing antibiotic prescribing. Vaccinations are effective. I mean, if you look at the flu shot, which I understand is contentious, right. uh, one of the arguments that people often make is, well, it's not a very good year. It's gonna be only 30% effective this year. But if you look at many of the treatments we have right now for many common diseases like heart attacks or you know high cholesterol, those treatments are probably around 30 percent, if not if not less. So the fact that we are you know concerned about efficacy at 30 percent, uh, maybe we should be considering that amongst you know across the board. Uh, but yeah, vaccines are very effective. Without vaccines, we've seen a lot of problems in Europe right now. They have a large outbreak of measles, a disease that should be gone because we have vaccines. We've seen kids die from it, right. which is well. And really we've even unfortunately, I read a couple. I think it was a couple of years ago. There was a child that died from the flu, from an influenza. I'm pretty sure. Oh, every um, year people die so, from the flu. So, and that's in you know we're supposed to be a developed country where, and it's unfortunate, obviously tragic that it happens, but it's kind of a medieval concept in a lot of ways that we haven't moved past that. So, on that note, what are some of the most common myths that you've heard through your experience about? antibiotics or why people want them or why people think they need them? That's a good question. I, I think, um, you know, one of the common myths is that it will help with my cold. And I think you talked about that earlier. Right. They don't really help with the cold because uh, colds aren't bacterial infections or viral infections. Uh, the other one that you see frequently and uh, is that patients or people come into the hospital and they, they explain or, or their loved ones explain that this person is confused especially elderly patients that may have baseline uh, confusion issues, right. that, like dementia, right. and they come in confused and they say, it must be their urinary tract infection that's causing this. Uh, you know, that's a dogma, unfortunately, that's been put through in medicine, and, and it's not necessarily the case. If, if you treat them with antibiotics, they may get better, but they may get better just on their own. Right. And, and it's not because they have a urinary tract infection, like everyone says, or some other infection. But oftentimes, it's just dehydration. They just right. need more chicken soup. So it does come back down to the age-old yeah. saying, yeah. fluids and rest. Yeah. So what, based on your experience and your education, um, what has to change 
in, in terms of what health care providers do, but also on the other side, what patients are asking for, for us to kind of battle against these resistant organisms that are continuing to develop against antibiotics? Yeah, there's a lot of things we can do. There's many things. Um, the first, things that, first thing I would say is patience. Um, if we all have a bit of patience, um, I think it could go a long way. So if, if you have the symptoms of a cold and you think antibiotics are going to fix you, wait a couple days. If you're not so unwell that you're you know, having ongoing fevers or ongoing feeling to the point where you can't move anymore, right. Okay, maybe get yourself to the emergency room. But if you're, you know, you feeling have a little if under you're the weather. feeling a little under the weather, give it time. Right. Oftentimes, these things take weeks to months to get better. The same thing on the prescriber side. If the doctor or the nurse practitioner or whoever is giving you the treatment is seeing you, if you think that you have a bit of time, just say, you know what? Are you not too bad? Either give them a script and say, you could fill this in a few days if you're still not feeling better, or say, why don't you come back and see me next week, or why don't you come back to the eMERGE, or come back to the walk-in in a week if you're still feeling under the weather. And then we can reevaluate then. Right. I think patience goes a long way. Definitely. And then the other thing I read, too, in your letter was it, the simple, this comes back, I, I interviewed a pharmacist about the flu shot, and she said, this is another huge thing, is people like practicing hygiene and washing their hands mm -hmm. will go a long way in not getting each other sick as well. Oh yeah, prevention is the best medicine. As we talked about influenza vaccine, washing your hands, hand hygiene is one of the most uh, effective means to sort of prevent the spread of both resistant organisms and influenza itself. So any infection, if, if you're exposed to it, wash your hands. It's good practice. It seems think. like our solutions are much more simple than we're making them out to be. <laughs> Isn't it true? Yes. Isn't it true? So if people want to get more information, you mentioned in your letter um, the World Health Organization has a lot of information on antibiotics and uh, Global Antibiotic Awareness Week. Was there anything else you wanted to uh, say to our viewers? No, I, I think that's, uh, covered we covered most of it. But yeah, if you have more information, you know, always feel free to reach out. But please uh, go see those websites. There's antibioticawareness.ca as well, which is, is, uh, has some good resources good resource? as well. Yeah, it's a local or national site that's helpful. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lucas Castellani, for your time. Um, we'll be back with more news coming up on TV after this. Stay tuned.